In this video, we will look at a very common pattern for alternation between two languages. It's called code switching. So in the last video, we looked at multilingualism and diglossia, and by the way, we never actually defined multilingualism. Multilingualism is a uh, situation where if you are in a society and there is more than one language, you usually have one conversation carried out in a single language. So if you go to um, Canada, for example, and you live in an English speaking part of the country, you'll find that most conversations are just going to be all English all the way. And if you're in Quebec, you're going to find that most conversations are all French all the way. Diglossia is a situation where you have more than one language in society, and there is already a societal consensus for which types of conversations which go in, in which language. So formal conversations should go in modern standard Arabic in the Arabic speaking world. And informal conversations should be carried out in the colloquial varieties for each of the regions. For example, modern standard Arabic for formal conversations and Egyptian colloquial Arabic for informal conversations. So these are multilingualism and diglossia. Code switching is a situation where you can have one conversation and within this, this conversation, you uh, use more than one language. So you go from one language to the other to the other throughout the conversation. This is also true for conversations where you go from one dialect or variety of a language to another, like standard American English and African American vernacular English. So code switching is a type of alternation between languages or varieties of a language where you see more than one language within a single conversation. And the switch usually happens across sentences or within clause boundaries, as we'll see in a moment. So one very famous case of code switching is Hinglish, which is a combination of Hindi and English in India. As you can see, we have structures where we have some words in English and some words in Hindi, as in hungry kya, Ab hunger kokaro, bye bye, grab a Snickers. So ab hunger kokaro means is hunger here now. We also have uh, advertisement for virgin, think hatke, think differently, and dominoes, hungry kya, hungry question. So as you can see, some part of the sentence is in English and some part of the sentence is in Hindi. There is a very common type of code switching in the in North America called Spanglish, which is the combination of English and Spanish. As you can see, they can be combined within a single sentence, as in, as little Red Riding Hood is walking along the forest, se encuentra con un lobo. She runs into a wolf. So how does the switch work? The switch is incredibly precise. These are not just two languages badly mixed together. If anything, there's a lot of structure going on in how they mix. Remember in week five, when we studied constituents, which are the subparts of a sentence. So you had constituents like noun phrases, verb phrases, inflectional phrases, so that you can see that this sentence is switches from English to Spanish at the edge between a complement phrase, a CP, and an inflectional phrase, an IP. So the CP in English, as Little Red Riding Hood is walking along the forest, is the description of how the verb happens. So all this fits in a single CP, and then you start an IP, an inflected phrase. She runs into a wolf. So in Spanglish, you usually switch between languages at the edge of constituents. So I mean, uh, think for a moment about the consequences of all of this. People think of, of languages like, like Spanglish as if they were just you know a haphazard mix of the languages, like they, there's no sense or structure to them, when what's actually happening is that they probably have more structure and more rules than English or Spanish alone. You have to know when the edges of the constituents are to make the switch there. <clears throat> And if you switch at somewhere in the middle of a constituent, that's ungrammatical. That is not correct Spanglish. 
it's also very interesting to note that this is a single structure and that there's some parts of the CP that are influencing some parts of the IP. For example, this phrase, se encuentra con un lobo, has a verbal person agreement with the subject. So this verb, encuentra, is um, conjugated for a third person singular. And it is conjugated to match the third person singular subject Little Red Riding Hood, which is here. So as you can see, one word in the English is, um, uh, has an influence on the grammatical structure of the Spanish. So there is morphological coherence across the switches. And again, as you can see, there's a lot of structure involved in forming a correct sentence of Spanglish. It's the same case when code switching between two varieties of a single language, like Standard American English and African American Vernacular English, or AVE. Here we can see some of the defining features for African American Vernacular English. For example, in two o'clock, they wasn't back. As you can see, we have they wasn't, not they weren't, as in the standard. This change, uh, where you only have one, where you don't have number agreement, where this verb is just for the singular and it matches they, is extremely common throughout the world. And it is, and as a matter of fact, extremely common in Germanic languages. This is the exact same way that Swedish verbs work, where you only have one form, regardless of whether the subject is singular or plural. So you see this in Ave. You also see, um, you also see it in this phrase, they was supposed to take the bus, where you only have the verb that doesn't match in number, because many languages don't do this. Here we have, we just walk in around. Here we don't have the verb to be. In standard American English, this would be, we were just walking around. This copula here has become a zero copula, which is, as we saw a couple of weeks ago, the same thing you'd see in Russian, in Arabic, in Indonesian, and so forth. So we have a zero copula, and we have the merger of a sound, the, um, the engma, the velar n, with the alveolar one, n, walk-in. And this is a process that is, ex that is extremely common in English of the United States, and in much of uh, many Southern dialects of English, this is also the way that the N is expressed. So we know that the speaker is going back and forth between varieties because we see these markers, but notice that it's also happening at the edges of constituents. So at about uh, two o'clock. About two o'clock is the edge between a prepositional phrase and a noun phrase. And this is where the switch happened. Then you have this phrase, two o'clock, they wasn't back, which is a, a, a whole inflected phrase. And then it switches onto a different inflectional phrase. You know one o'clock, period. So from one inflected phrase to the other, and then also here from one IP to the other. So again, when you uh, when when people use code switching there's a lot of structure involved probably more so than if they were just speaking english or spanish or one variety of english or the other so all of these are very precise processes why do people code switch this is going to be a central idea of the class for the next three weeks people uh do a lot of their verbal behavior because they want to affirm belonging to some human group. They want to be in group with the people they're talking to. You are going to use term, um, some words with your family to assure them that you are their family. And you're going to speak in a certain way with your friends. Again, to assure them that you are their friends and to construct a mutual identity together. So in our verbal decisions, we're always trying to build these bridges with the people we're communicating with and uh, building community with them. This is the same impulse that would make someone code switch. And let me just go back for a moment. In general, in every linguistic decision that you make as a human being, you're trying to project a persona to whoever you're talking to. And this persona would be someone that is, you know, a friend of your friends, uh, um, you know, family to your mother and so forth. So we always make these decisions about how we want to project ourselves to the group of people we're talking to. If anything, we don't 
code switch to hide identities, but to celebrate them and to project them to people for them to know who we are. This is the reason why people use different mixes of languages. Maybe if you're a speaker of Spanglish, you will use all Spanish to communicate with your grandmother. And you would use all English to communicate in a government office. But then you would use different mixes of Spanish and English depending on who you're talking to. Maybe your friends use a certain ratio of Spanish and English. Maybe um, your colleagues who are slightly older than you use a slightly different mix. So with each of these uh, groups, you're going to use slightly different proportions of one or the other. That's why people code switch to project an identity. And this is the behavior that all humans do, whether they're monolingual or multilingual. And by the way, we'll study this much in depth, but unfortunately, many speakers of, of the languages involved in code switching have negative attitudes towards code switching. If you talk to someone who, who only speaks English or only speaks Spanish, they might tell you that Spanglish is like a mess, that Spanglish is like, you know, a bad form of these two. First of all, this is not true. As we have seen, the switching is not illogical. And if anything, there might be more structure to the switching than just speaking the languages by themselves. Um, the, you do them not because they're illogical, but in order to establish a bridge of solidarity to someone you're speaking to. However, many people feel that, you know, if, there's, if we are one community, we should all be speaking one language. And this impulse is at the heart of prescriptivism, as we will study in, uh, in the coming weeks. This is, again, extremely unfortunate because they uh, make negative value judgments about code switching, which have no reason, as we've seen. Summary, code switching is a pattern where people alternate between two languages or two varieties of the same language, and they do so within a single conversation. This usually occurs at sentence edges or at constituent edges, and they do this to express belonging to a human group. Um, in the next video, we'll talk about pidgin and creole languages.